Before we begin, please note that today's video does cover sensitive topics that might be too much for some viewers. I have had a lot to say about accountability lately and how important it is and how far it can go and I feel like I'm not taking my own advice. Obviously by now you guys have seen the tweets that are circulating around. They unfortunately are not fake. Those are real tweets, like real things that I said. First of all, I want to acknowledge that I feel the same way about them that you do. I think they're so disturbing, they're wrong, they're horrible, and they're disgusting. Uh, of course, I do appreciate the people who are coming to bat for me and like saying like, you know, it was so long ago and like she's grown and stuff, but like it doesn't, honestly, it doesn't matter like it literally does not matter they are horrible those people that get under influencers apology videos for their very racist past remarks and comment things like oh we love you oh we forgive you we're here for you we've all been there before they must be learning french and i just don't consider them real people like i just can't imagine having that much of a parasocial relationship with someone that i could see them talking about how they didn't learn empathy for minorities until after college and be like, wow, they could never make me hate you. Are you dumb? Like, what do you mean you spent most of your main developmental years being racist and it took you till after college to unlearn that? Like, that's not normal. Let's not act like that's some rite of passage of adolescence because it's not. We should challenge students in these schools to have advanced placement programs in these schools. We have this notion that somehow if you're poor, you cannot do it. Poor kids are just as bright and just as talented as white kids. Oh, you must be so glad to be in New York. The South is so racist. The South is so racist. Oh, you mean the part of the South that starts in Canada and ends at Mexico? Find me a part of America that's not racist. I'll move today. <laughs> I'll wait. I want to talk about particularly the Trayvon Martin, George Zimmerman situation. I am outraged about the special guest at a Florida gun show this past weekend. Yep, George Zimmerman. He, took, he shook hands and he autographed photos of himself and even though a handful of people actually showed up, it's still really sad that we live in a world where a child killer, yes, he's a child killer, is raised to the level of celebrity. Try not to be so emotional because I don't want it to seem like it's like a sympathy thing at all. I also don't want to blame anybody else at all. And so I'm trying like to be really careful about that. I just want to explain like and give some context into like my mindset at the time. And so the guy looks at me and he wraps his arm around me and he looks in the camera and he goes, say and it puts his thumbs up and then like blank and he says the n-word like hard r n-word like say n-word like hard r like smiling loud as like yells it and then like looks at me and looks into the camera like say n-word like i'm not gonna say it it's, it's not how i am you know you're stupid because I have seen like some comments today that are like, well, no shit, she's racist, like white nepo baby, like a little like spoiled brat. And that was not my situation. My parents were addicts, so I was adopted by my grandparents when I was like 10 and I grew up with them from that point on. And as is true for a lot of grandparents, they're a little bit less progressive than a lot of us are now. And my grandma has dementia, so it was really just like me and my grandpa. And he is a very, very, right-wing conservative man okay it was like my household was literally just fox news all the time rush limbaugh like if you guys know who that is but we got to see a different side of you yesterday there were some other people though who um who heard some of your comments and they got mad or they got confused you know who rush limbaugh is no he ain't nobody you need to know but rush limbaugh is a, a very popular uh, radio host yeah with an a on the end because it's not racist that's the point i could be talking about a male like playing literally all day long through the house and that was just like the only thing ever that i had been exposed to uh rush limbaugh is going to start out uh with some stuff that's bad he's going to graduate to vile and uh by the end uh he's going to be a lunatic okay it's going to be sheer madness um, it seems that a majority of the black population has remained angry, frustrated, and behind. They've been left behind. They're acting like they've been left behind. And, of course, we've, we've heard that this is because of racism, natural, uh, systemic, institutional racism in America, that we are unfair, that this country is uh, just horrible and, and rotten. Do you ever ask yourself how it is that people not even born here can come here and in a few short years begin prospering in school, their own business, and yet people who are born in this country somehow 
have, have, have been raised to hate it, to think they're still back in the days of slavery. I mean, and you wonder how racism is fostered in this country. Gee, you know, I wonder why? how it got into people's heads. You guys have also seen my mom's Twitter because she was responding back and forth about the Trayvon Martin situation, and I just should have known better. I know her, and I should have known that she is not somebody that I take any sort of political insight from at all. Again, sometimes you like have these people that you like put on a pedestal and you think everybody older than you is smarter than you and knows everything and they do not. One of the greatest myths we tell ourselves is that with age comes wisdom, even though time and time again, that's proven to not be true. Lived experience plus wisdom equals some sort of good outcome. But if you just have lived experience without the wisdom, the outcome's the same. The generational curse continues. The question is, if you're a person without wisdom, which most people seem to be, and even those with wisdom can make mistakes, do you deserve to be tortured for your mistakes? We like to think of ourselves as good people, good people that don't want to hurt other people. But if you examined our life from birth till death, we're bound to hurt some people. The question is, on a spectrum, how much pain do you cause? And how much pain do you deserve because of that? I would say ultimately we would seek to cause less damage even to those who cause it. But for some people, once you cause damage, you now deserve the same done to you. But how does that make you any better than the person who came before you who caused the damage in the first place? It's a type of cognitive dissonance, a lacking of wisdom that makes us feel justified in hurting people who have hurt us. In Tao Te Ching, in the section titled Not Knowing, it says, not to know the things you ought to know is folly. To know that there are some things you cannot know is wisdom. The wise recognize the limits of their knowledge and the foolish think they know everything. Truthfully, it took me a really long time. Like I know some of the tweets I was like 18 and people are like, yeah, like she was old enough to know better. Like, honest to God, you guys, it wasn't until like even after college that I really started to like shift my way of thinking. And there are people in my life who I might have looked up to forever who I do not agree with. And I think it's amazing now that people are like learning earlier on about politics and like forming their own opinions outside of like what their parents think or what they're hearing or whatever it is. But I, that just wasn't the case for me. I, whatever I heard, I passed on. I'm sorry, very, very sorry to anybody who is hurt by the tweets because obviously they are very hurtful. Like a lot of it is just like, like what, like why would I even say that? Someone I've wanted to talk about is Brooke Schofield. It seems like Brooke has the girlies divided because we were all on her side when she obviously exposed Clinton Kane. Rightfully so. He lied about some wild stuff. But now it has been revealed that Brookie has a little past. Not that I think what Clinton Kane did was right. I also wasn't necessarily a fan of Brooke, so I didn't do a video supporting her. But if I was one of those women who did a video supporting her, and I was a woman of color, now these tweets have come out, I would feel really dumb right now. I'd feel like silly, because who are we supporting? Just to be super clear, two things can exist at the same time. We can acknowledge the damage that Clinton Kane did um, towards Brooke and like just everyone involved, whilst also acknowledging that that doesn't discount the damage these tweets are doing and the damage she's done. I'm gonna say this again because I don't think I said it right the first time. I'm not surprised with what's happening with Brooke Schofield, mainly because racism is such an integral part in American culture. We were founded on slavery. We were founded on racism, on, on white people believing that they were better than black people. And I know that because of that, because of the history, it's gonna take each generation time for them to unlearn the racism that they, they grew up being surrounded by. But the good thing is that it's gonna be less and less each time. I think specifically with the Brooke Schofield situation, her apology, I think that her apology needed, needed so much more work. I don't know who that was for, but I feel like, and I don't think you guys are gonna like what I'm gonna say, but I feel as if black people are blinded by the trauma and the hurt that they have endured at the hands of white people and they are not able to properly see white people and their healing and and the path that they have to go through to unlearn this because i feel like if this was some crazy like fascist guy who had been super like right wing forever very loud about it and then he slowly was like wait hold on this doesn't seem right and he slowly transitioned to becoming more and more like liberal 
people would be applauding him. They'd be like, wow, this is so amazing. Like, good job for you. But because the situation where she's already benefiting, people aren't accepting the apology. And I wouldn't accept her apology just because of the way that she said it. I feel like she needs to go through a little bit more work. But people are a product of their environment. We are a product of our environment. Same goes for her. And same goes for so many other white people. We're not giving them a pass. We're not owing them anything. But if who they are right now, they say they've grown. They say, I used to be racist. I used to be a racist person. I used to think all of these things. I used to hate people because I was taught to hate people. And I've taken time to unlearn these things and to become a better person. Now I am not racist and I'm working towards any racist inclination that I have. What more do we want? Do I Brittany Broski her? said, I'm crushed to learn about the Cody Co allegations. If it's proven to be true, then that's extremely upsetting as a collaborator and longtime fan. Brittany. I find all of whatever. No, I find all of this disgusting and inappropriate. Dude, I just, first of all, I wasn't even like a consenting adult. You yeah. know what I mean? For she would not be saying if the allegations are true, if it was about any frat Wolfie boy. Cindy. Or just, right. No, yeah. if, if it was if it was about like Anybody a different girl, yeah, like and it just yeah, she doesn't or just like any just, man. It just proves the fucking point. Any man know. who's not Cody Ko and she's not associated with and like doesn't love them, like yeah, it really is just she's like, only responding because she's on the spot. Yeah. yeah, if it's wild, I mean they're true. Yeah, like it happened. Right? Like, like what do you yeah. mean, if? bro? It, makes me really it also because, just like, wasn't like one time. Like I hooked up with Cody Ko so many times across the years that it's like if i have to like the thing is i don't have the old phone like i like want to go find my old phone or old whatever like to gather more let me what if i just went to my twitter dms with him to see if they still exist from when i was like literally a baby child how old was i on april 28th 2015 see so you were what shut up brother uh. brother uh. brother uh. And I was just such a fan. That's like the sad part is it's like That's definitely an abuse of power. Fan. The myth of the perfect victim comes from our bias and prejudice. We want to believe that somebody out there could be the perfect victim. And maybe an example like Tamir Rice is a good example of someone who could have been the perfect victim, who I would argue was a perfect victim. He was so young and innocent and taken way too soon. But was Tamir Rice innocent because he was too young to be considered guilty of any crime, social or legal? What about Trayvon Martin, who after his death, I never heard anything bad about. Michael Brown was obviously a complicated case as he was a bully and stole before he ended up passing away. And at the same time, I think we can all agree he didn't deserve to die that day. Regardless of the individual cases at hand, most of us will not leave this earth innocent or without guilt. You don't need to make excuses for people's bad behavior, but you do need to make a path for redemption if you want to break generational curses. Wanting a different outcome is nice, but useless if you don't put in the effort. And the effort starts with forgiveness. At least, that's what I keep hearing from religion, philosophers, scholars, and monks. In Jane Austen's Pride and Prejudice, there's a quote that says, what are men to rocks and mountains? And I think it's a good reminder to remember, you are nothing. My head in real life while I'm dead My belly's being fed and I'm okay I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah Sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, da, 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 da.